Ah, loot boxes for Star Wars Battlefront 2. Now this video is not going to rub anyone up the wrong way. Guys, today I'm going to be talking about why I do consider the loot boxes for Star Wars Battlefront 2 to be very much the very definition of pay to win. I know a lot of people are still trying to defend it as not being paid to win, but I'm going to cover something that I think will explain, like many other YouTubers before me so far this week, that it is very much by definition at this point in time, very, very much pay to win. So here I unlocked in just this one pack, this ability for Boba Fett, which is gonna make fuel burn less while flying, all the way up to 25%. So you'll be able to fly around for 25% longer, which doesn't sound like a lot, okay? Uh, just level one for the intense barrage pack was uh, quite, quite insane. But what I'm gonna show you now is what I would say is the piece de resistance of aptly explaining that the game is in fact very much indeed going to be pay to win at launch unless they change something. So check out this card here, the fully upgraded version of this. Boba Fett takes less damage when using Rocket Barrage while flying with his jetpack. The top tier 100% damage reduction, i.e. basically invulnerability, while using that ability, while using rocket barrage and flying with a jetpack. Now don't forget you can stack these cards and with the heroes you don't necessarily have to get rid of anything in order to do that. Some of the standard player cards means that you'll have to give up something else like the shotgun for the assault class but you can still stack two and more cards. So this concussion rocket for example the top tier is four seconds of stun duration compared to one, which obviously is what everybody will be using until they unlock some stuff or pay for some stuff. Now it's also worth noting that when you buy cards and upgrade them, that your character levels up. So if you want to level up really quickly, you just buy a shit ton of cards. So by very definition, the game is going to be paid to win because you're going to be able to max your level out. You're going to be able to eventually, after spending a certain amount of money, have the best of all the cards and then stack them to your hat's content. Now, it could be argued, and I've seen the argument made, that everyone can do it, therefore it's fine and not pay to win. Well, no, it's not. There's plenty of people that won't drop, drop a penny on the game. Plenty of people who can't after already paying the $60 for the game. So here's the standard class. Look, health on kill, maximum level 40. 40 HP will be returned to you for every kill that you get. Now, you put cards like this in the hands of people that are good at the game, it's no surprise that they're always at the top of the leaderboards, even if the rest of their team completely sucks. Like, it is pay to win in the sense that it's going to make you yourself on the battlefield a hell of a lot more dangerous than anybody else. Here we've got health on uh, health regen on on melee kills or melee kills. A hundred is the max. A hundred. And again, you could pair that with the HP for kills card as well. So you could get 140 if you melee everyone to death. And again, range and damage increases on things like the grenades. And as I said, some of these, it will replace stuff. Like you've got ability replacement cards here and that will replace something. So you will lose something in order to have the possibly better thing. Now that would be great. That would make sense. It would level the playing field a bit more if people couldn't stack so many of these cards or have so many really good cards, they would have to lose something on their standard class in order to have that extra potential perk. It would be a way, possibly, of mitigating some of this pay-to-win problem. If we go over to the ships, the bombers, and the fighters, things don't improve much more over here either. Like this defensive upgrade boost card, maximum health recovered, maximum potential, is 100%, 100 health recovered from that, that star card if you upgrade it all the way. That is insane. Again, especially when you consider the fact that it can be paired with yet another card. Uh, maybe not one that will necessarily complement it, but maybe something that will give you another boost somewhere else, like uh, ability refresh, uh, reduce time, or um, advanced torpedoes, increase your torpedo damage by 40%. Are you telling me that's not gonna give an advantage in the game over somebody who doesn't have that card or doesn't have it at that level? That is insane. That is by definition, pay to win, at least for your character. Sure, you could still probably lose the game if your team's incompetent or not very good, but if you, especially if you get a full team of people that have paid to win, people are gonna get trampled constantly until they either get so good at the game that they can outplay the people with the cards, 
I guess that could be a could be a thing. But guys, I think it's time to just roll over and accept the fact. Even as a gamer, as a fan of games, even as a huge Star Wars fan, this is fucking ridiculous. Again, if we go over to the fighters, cooldown, uh, overheat, cooldown reduction multiplier can be upgraded all the way to 50%, so you're going to be able to start shooting again before another player can. Totally not an advantage in any way, shape, or form. Oh, but it gets even better. You can tune your lasers, so you can have a primary weapon damage multiplier of 10%. Totally not going to give you any kind of advantage in any kind of dogfights. And then there's just the usual things like regen and... Um, Improving the def defensive abilities, uh, recharge duration, make it a shorter time. Totally, again, not an advantage, especially if you stack these things so you've got a, a CAD for cooldown reduction on your lasers and the CAD for doing more damage with your lasers or firing for longer before overheating, all those kind of boosters that there is. That is insane and is definitely going to give people advantage, no matter how good or bad they may be, especially if they're good people that are very good at the game are only going to be boosted even further by this. This isn't a shortcut so the players with less time can eventually get stuff by buying them or grinding day in day out to try and get the same cards as everybody else. It is an advantage. And I know some people are going to find any way they can to defend that because they know very well that they would also like that advantage. It's not a level playing field out there guys and that's what it should be. The game should be based on your skill on a level playing field, everyone with the same stuff, you know, they can swap out weapons and all that kind of thing, or different loadouts, but this is something specifically for having an advantage over somebody who doesn't have that thing. And again, with the pay-to-win element of that, I will not support this, and I've already cancelled my pre-order. Laugh if you will, but I've already cancelled my pre-order. I've seen enough in the beta to want to wait and see if they will do something about the balance, because if we're going to be able to buy these, it's just going to be a case of throw some money at it, and you'll be able to have the max level character with all the stuff and have a massive advantage over everybody else, which is not something I would support as a very competitive gamer. It's not something I can support at all. Well, anyway, guys, let me know what you think about all this in the comments below. Are you still going to purchase the game? Have you been in the beta? It has been reasonably fun playing the beta, but this, this shit does not belong in gaming. You've paid $60 for the game. DLC, all that kind of thing, you can argue. That's a different, that's an argument for a different day. So again, thanks very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video and got a little look at what's to come if DICE and EA decide to keep it exactly the way it is and do no balancing or some way to restrict or reduce the power of these cards. Because I don't think it's going to, it's not going to lead to a fair playing field out there for the people that haven't got the money to throw at the game in order to get everything straight away. We shouldn't not we shouldn't be allowing our quote unquote proper games to be turning into the equivalent of mobile gaming. Let's not let it get to that kind of point, guys. We need to make a point. We need to make a stand and not support this kind of shit. Cause it's only a matter of time before this becomes the new norm. And in single player games, fair enough, whatever. But multiplayer games, no. This this loot box stuff for an advantage needs to end here and now.